Hi, my name is Joe Miller, and I want to welcome you to this episode of The 10-Minute Teacher, where I share more insights on my five-day process for weekly sermon preparation. Here we are at day five, and so far we've covered on day one, observation and meaning. Day two was exposition of the scripture passage. Day three was application. Day four was illustration. And now day five, we have confrontation and conversation. The goal in this last day of your sermon preparation is to let God's Spirit confront you about what happens next in your own life, and then turn your conviction into a conversation with your church family. This is important because it doesn't start with, what message does God have for this people? It begins with, what is God confronting me about my own life, about my own relationship with Him? What needs to change? What is going well? What is not going well? And what happens next in my life? And then that becomes the foundation for creating a conversation about the truth of God's Word in the life of your church family. In terms of study, what you're going to be doing is taking all of your previous content, all the conversations, all the opportunities with your teaching team, and also conversations with the different congregation members throughout the week. And then you're going to craft a sermon and a study that can take place in smaller groups after the Sunday morning experience that helps explore your final take-home truth. So what then is the take-home truth? Here we see this familiar graphic that we've used in previous videos to show you that on day one you did a passage outline with your historical truths. Day two there was a timeless outline with timeless truths. And day three you explored all the applied truths that came out of your study. And now on your last day, day five, you're going to create a sermonic outline that emphasizes the one take-home truth that you want to preach and proclaim to your church family. And where does this take-home truth come from? You're going to have far more information that you can ever include in a sermon. And this is where a lot of guys make mistakes. You have your historical truths. You have your timeless truths, and you have a variety of applied truths. But now you have to create a filter, a grid. This comes from your time in praying to the Holy Spirit. This comes in your conversations with the church family. And you're going to filter out what seems like very important things. And they are important, historical truths or applied truths or timeless truths. But you just simply can't get it all into one week. But you have to decide which of those are the most significant and get you to the place where you can focus on one take-home truth that people can apply and live out this week in their life individually, in their life as a family, in their life as a church. So then the take-home truth is that single idea you want your hearers to take home and apply to their lives. The take-home truth answers the question, what happens next in the life of my church family? That's the question you're going to answer, and that's the question you're going to focus on in crafting your final sermon. So as you begin to develop your take-home truth, you're going to have to answer a few questions. First, related to understanding. People have to buy into it. So you have to ask yourself, what do I need to explain so that people can understand what this take-home truth is all about? As you develop, look at the area of belief. Do we buy this Take home truth. Do we see the connection between this truth and my life, this truth and the scripture, this truth and the life that Christ has for me? Does it seem contrary to the way I'm living my life now? Do we value something more individually or as a culture or even as a church that keeps us from truly believing in the value of this take home truth? And finally, as you develop this idea, you have to look at behaviors. Where does this take-home truth show up in real life? What does it really look like if I lived out this take-home truth? Can I see how it applies to my life? And these are all questions you need to make sure are answered throughout the sermon so that there is understanding, belief, and behavior all in line with the message that you have from God. Then once you've developed this idea, then you need to work on application. Application, again, deals with this area of understanding. You have to ask the question, what are some concrete and extended applications, not abstract and brief ones, that can really help people understand this? One of the mistakes that many pastors make is they go to their sermon illustration book and they look at a theme or a topic and they find some pithy little joke or some little anecdote that they believe illustrates some point. But 
often they're just humorous or they're interesting, but they don't really help people truly understand in concrete, practical terms where this take-home truth applies. So we can't use abstract stories from people who lived 150 years ago. We can't use abstract theoretical applications. We've got to be very specific in telling people what they need to do and how this take-home truth applies to their life. In the area of belief, we need to ask ourselves the question, what are some examples that both illustrate and apply the biblical concept? Again, we're looking at very specific applications that connect with the life of your congregation. Now, these may not illustrate and apply the concept to the church down the street. They may not apply it to a church that's three states over or around the world. But these application and illustration points have to address belief for your congregation and your family life. And finally, in application, we need to look at behavior. Where does this show up in real life? What does it look like? Can we see how it applies to my life? And once again, here the most significant application illustrations are going to be from real people in your life. Not fictional people, not stories that other pastors who are popular or famous have told. But what does it look like in your life? Remember, you're preaching your conviction. So that has to come out. So obviously, if God's convicted you of some message for this take-home truth, then it has to have some relevance to your life. Illustrate it with your life. Illustrate it with the life of people in your congregation who you've talked with and have given approval to say, yes, share this story from my life. Or even better, have people come up front and share a story from their life, how this take-home truth has impacted their understanding, belief, or behavior. And as a result of all this, at the end of day five, you should have a good sermon outline and or a manuscript that applies the take-home truth to your church for this week. You may preach this same passage five years from now, and you're going to have a different take-home truth, and it's going to apply differently to your church in five years than it will today. So focus on today. Don't think of your message as a timeless icon that will live forever in the realm of cyberspace and inspire people for generations. I think there's something to be said for a message that is so relevant to your church and the life of your congregation that when others hear it outside, they may not get it. They may understand the historical truths, or the timeless truth that you express in your message. But when it comes to the take-home truth, that will not be as relevant to people that hear outside your congregation. And the more refined and focused you are, and the more successful you are at building this for your congregation, probably, to be honest, the less successful that message will be outside of your congregation. And that's all right, because God has called you to preach to a group of people that are in your life, and whose life matters to you, and who you are responsible for helping transform into mature followers of Jesus Christ. That's all for this episode of The 10 Minute Teacher. I hope these insights help to strengthen your study and equip you to preach the Word of God with integrity and power.